Please give a warm welcome to Francesca Martinez. Hello. Hello. It's such an honour to be here. I'm going from an idea in our heads to this. It's really humbling. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I would say, you know, brilliant points have been made today. Um, I don't want to repeat them. Uh, I'd like to say that I think a key part of social change is to challenge the toxic ideas that disempower people and strip them of their confidence and their belief that change is possible. I think climate change is a physical manifestation of these disgusting ideals. These ideals of greed, of individualism, of materialism, they are literally killing the planet and they are also creating mass suffering. I, for one, think ideas can change the way we live, the ideas can shape the world we live in. And I think if we are to uh, create a mass movement, we've got to engage people with new and beautiful ideas. We've got to reconnect them to each other. And we've got to reconnect them to what it means to be human. Now, I do change my life. You know, how I saw myself dictated how I related to the world. And I went through a period of feeling very abnormal and faulty and insecure. The world made me feel that I was a mistake, that I was abnormal, a freak. And when I felt like that, I didn't have any energy or focus for anything else. But what happened is one day I woke up and I realised, hang on a minute, I've never met a normal person. <laughs> And I'm wobbly, and that's the way I'm meant to be. And that shift of perspective was a profound moment for me, because it made me concentrate on how lucky I was. And it also was a profound political awakening, because I realised all my insecurities had nothing to do with being wobbly and everything to do with living in a culture that breeds dissatisfaction and depression. So, <laughs> now, these disgusting ideals and these superficial values that are promoted so heavily, they aren't an accident. They are a clear ploy to depoliticise people. Because the first step to creating a better world is to believe in one. And if you don't have the time or energy to think about anything other than the thigh gap, or whether you're going bald, or what brand of phone you have, you're, you're not going to put that energy into things that matter. So I think it's really important that we realise that the personal relationship with ourselves is absolutely vital. Consumerism thrives on us, billions of people creating pointless junk, and then billions of us consuming that pointless junk. And for it to work, so that, so that busy cycle to keep going, enough of us have to believe that we're not good enough as we are, so that we'll go out and buy shit we don't need. That's it. So it's really vital to realise that accepting yourself as you are is an act of civil disobedience. <laughs> I'm just finished by saying 
you know, every human right that we enjoy today was, was fought for by people who focused outwards, not inwards. So being happy as you are right now really is a political act. And I really, what I take so much from Naomi's book is that she's made climate change inspiring for me because before it was a really daunting, scary, overwhelming problem that I felt helpless about. But her framing of it has made me feel that actually we can use climate change as an opportunity to create a better world, one that isn't built on consuming never-ending bits of materialism that don't make any of us feel happier. So I think it's just so inspiring to realise that what she's proposing is a reconnection of, to values that really matter to each other and to the planet. And I think that if we can love ourselves more, then it's much more likely we'll love each other more and this beautiful planet. Before I go, I just have to say a huge thank to Dan, Maya and Caitlin who have done the work of 20 full timers. And I really want everyone to give them a huge round of applause.